Before I opened my mouth and spat in his face, he firmly added, It's a one-time offer. I was killed because of you. My friend got killed, and Vincesto, and you're as seriously asking me to join you. I laughed in his face. Yes, I recognize Bond's note. <laughs> Take the notes. Take the notes, my Bonte. He grabbed me roughly, ferociously, and pulled me towards him. And gratitude for helping Bond, I won't kill you. While well, you are so nice, he grabbed my wrist and dragged me outside. This is so rude. Malbanti strode quickly. He's striding like the diva he is. Let go of me. He was pulling me along without paying attention to the fact that I couldn't keep up with him. He's probably even a lot taller than we are. He dragged me furiously, mercilessly, as if I were a sack. Let go! I don't think so. <laughs> We're like, let me go. He's like, no. <laughs> this is so funny. It seemed that he was doing this on purpose to humiliate me in front of everyone. Malbanti seemed to say, look how pitiful and weak our opponents are. He's so kind. He opened the door, pulled me inside. He pushed me against the wall and chained me to it. What are you doing? He pressed so close to me that I could feel his breath on my cheek, and then he hissed through his teeth. I want you to understand that I'm no longer Bond. He headed towards the exit. No, don't go away. Don't leave me here. My Bond, he froze at the door, turned his head, but didn't look at me. He seemed to be tormented by doubts, but didn't dare to do anything. He cares about us. Come on. I know that you do. Is your angel side... Malbanti. Oh. He's feeling it too. Come on. Finally, he looked into my eyes, but immediately darted out of the room. I waited for him to come back, but Malbanti didn't return. An hour passed. Two hours. Five hours. He says you're staying in there. <laughs> what is this? A day passed. I was tormented by thirst and hunger, but after a while it stopped getting worse. At some point, I started ignoring my hunger. Who's here? I began to see flickering silhouettes somewhere in the dark. My whole body was on fire. Droplets of sweat were dripping down my face. They fell from my forehead straight into my eyes, and I had turned my head trying to brush them off. Who's here? Oh god, we're going insane. The shadows moved. Sometimes they were getting closer. Sometimes they moved farther away. They danced and twirled. Get lost! <laughs> I screamed into the void. Suddenly, a shadow jumped from around the corner, clung to me, and touched my eyes with its long, black, thin fingers. She pressed on my eyes. The dungeon became completely dark. Malbanti lay on the ground, arms around le- arms and legs outstretched to the sides. He looked at the sky. The clouds floated lazily. Someone's little feet stopped near his face. Albanti jumped up. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? I have to be here. That means I have to be here too. You are not flirting with him. He's mine! You're stupid. You mean? Malbanti jerked back away from her. Tears welled up in his eyes. Oh no, my child. I'm not. Oh. I honestly feel so bad for him. Like, literally, I think this those words hurt him because... Just because he's a hybrid, people expect him to be evil, but he's not. And I don't think he wants to be. And uh, someone's telling him that he's mean. He's like, I'm not. Like, I'm not just that. Why does everyone believe that I'm evil just because of who I am? Like, I feel so bad. No, sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. The girl stretched out her pinky. Arrogant says that what they do on earth when they want to make up. Malbanti looked at the girl's outstretched finger, puzzled. Taking a few seconds to think, he... 
held out his pinky in response because he doesn't seem to be the Malbanti we know now. So he held out his pinky in response. Okay. They shook on it according to the funny earthly tradition. How nice. A woman jumped out from around the corner. Her dress made noises as she moved. Who is this Bond? I don't know. The woman's eyes widened the minute she recognized the girl. The woman clung to the child, grabbed her hand and a little roughly and said, You're an arrogant sister. And you are the mother of Malbanti. Oh. Oh. Uh-uh. The girl perceived it as a game. Yeah, she is my mother. So what? The woman gasped. Be quiet, Bond. Why? What have you done? He's just a little boy. I can't. What kind of childhood is this? The girl jerked her hand back, trying to free herself. My brother will get angry. Do you know how powerful he is? Malbanti's mouth fell to her knees, shook the girl, looking into her eyes as if begging her. Please, can you keep it a secret that you saw Bonte? My name is Malbanti. Ooh. Please, son, not now. She looked at the girl again. I keep it a secret. A man's voice was heard, and the woman turned around, relieved and scared at the same time. Relieved and scared at the same time. She won't keep secrets. He is fine. He's fine. But can I just say, he reminds me of... Let me just say the Shadow Lord from Shadows and Bones. <laughs> <laughs> the shadows swirled in a circle. They began to close in on me, and they made the dungeon seem darker. And in this darkness, I heard an awful animal voice. This voice said something in a language I didn't understand. It kept repeating something, whispering, insisting, but I didn't understand. I just didn't understand. The frustration. I feel so bad for her. I was trembling violently. Someone put a cold rag on my forehead and constantly kept me from falling off the bed. I couldn't see where I was, but when the tormenting visions left me, I could see someone else's face bend over me. I heard a familiar commanding voice. She woke up. You can go. The stranger left us alone without further ado. Exhausted, I just turned on my side so that I'd see Malbanti. He was sitting in a chair next to the bed. Has he been watching us sleep? <laughs> and actually, now I'm curious. Who found us? Did he came in to check up on us and then he took us to his room? Have you seen my memories? I nodded. Do you know I see them? I shook my head. Every mortal has a hidden power that he can develop. Your power is to be an empty vessel capable of absorbing some of mine. Only I can fill you, and only you can balance my destructive power. Mabanti spoke in a calm, even bored manner. But despite all his apparent calm, I could feel the power within him. And it was like nothing I've ever encountered. I could have fits only one lock. Thank you. I've heard that before. He locked, He looked closely into my eyes. Why does it have to be us? The fever made me weak and I was struggling to speak. Immortals can get a fever? Albanti looked at me for a long time, as if trying to decide whether to tell me or not, but in the end he just shrugged. He got up from the chair, came closer and bent over me. I'm not as strong as I used to be, because of you. You have great strength, but it's mine. Mine. Do you understand? He squatted down so that our faces were at the same level. I realized very quickly that you saw my memories. Do you know why? I shook my head. Because I remember you. You were there. Yeah, I tried to calm him down. Not improved. Oh. He carefully looked into my eyes. There, on the very edge, with me. You touched me, and I saw you. He came closer to me and whispered. 
I remember you. Aww. That's so cute, though. Like, honestly, like, he was such a scared boy. He was scared. He was terrified of that, what they could do to him. Like, honestly, imagine being surrounded by and heard of very, very powerful people slowly circling in on you and you have no way to escape and they keep on circling you in. You have nowhere to escape. He was literally standing at the edge of that cliff and they keep on moving in on him and he's like, stay away. And they keep on moving closer. Like he was terrified. I can't imagine what he must have felt like. I was scared. Yes! It's normal! And your touch calmed me down. You literally? Or just the young version of you? He pulled away and his face became stone cold again. I had to. Malbanti returned to his chair. He put his hands on the armrests. He was serious and kept staring at me without blinking. I'll be kind and gentle to you from now on. I want you to understand that I'm not your enemy and we can be on the same side. But if you refuse, if you choose the wrong side, believe me, I'll become the most merciless enemy you've ever met. Why do you need me? Because you help bond and because you have my powers. Duh. <laughs> I had to say that. I'll win this war with or without you. But it'll definitely be easier and more pleasant with you. I don't believe you. I don't think he cares. You don't have to. There have been many rumors about me, but I'll dispel them all. Are you ready to listen to my side of things? Am I ready? No, I'm not. <laughs> Let me stop. Yes, I'm very, very ready. Yes. I am very, very ready. I saw his eyes sparkle with satisfaction. Your bond with my bond is growing stronger. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Let's see what the story is about. Like, you can see, I've never played this, so. Surprise me, sir. My mother was an angel. My father was a demon. There was no law of segregation back then. And I was one of the first children born like that. It was all about the previous wars between hell and heaven. Peace brought love. At the time, many children died due to instability of the world, including the children of angels and demons. But I survived, and I was stronger than many. Oh! So because of that, I assume that because of that insane power that um, half-breeds, as in half-angel, half-demons possess, it's not likely for the children of an angel and a demon to survive. So that made him even more dangerous and feared because he was one of the first people to survive. They began to fear me. Like I said, people, I don't even need to read. <laughs> I don't even need to read that. I just know. I did something. Not him being sad. Like, I feel so bad. He fell silent. It was clear that he was overcome by conflicting emotions. So strong that he, even he barely managed to hide them. Like, honestly, no matter who you turn into, when you are a child, you are very sensitive. And depending on what characteristics you got from your parents, that sensitivity can be amplified or not. He was a little child and he was hunted by angels and demons because they feared his powers. So of course he was terrified. And thinking back on that, when he was that little, he didn't have that security, that satisfaction, that um, arrogant smile. He didn't have that. He was little. He was scared. And when he's thinking back about that moment, he's reliving those emotions. Not the emotions he's having now about that. Like, that situation, I think, marked him somehow. Like, thinking back about that, he doesn't feel uh, happy or is smirking. Because, yeah, they feared me. I know that they did. And I'm happy because of that. Like, he, he's not. He's, he, he's conflicted. He doesn't know what to think. 
I did something and they began to hunt me. Oh, I did something and the hunt began. You were hunted because you did something? What have you done? No. No? Tell me. No, you're not ready. It's too early. Are you sure or are you not ready to t to relive that? In the end, they decided that I was dangerous and that my powers should be studied. Now that's horrible. The way he says my powers should be studied. So they literally would have wanted to like lock him up like some uh like some guinea pig and experiment on him to study his powers. Like Honestly, I imagine Bond at the cliff being eight years old and all of these people, perhaps even scientists being among them, being among the people that he's trying to beg away from and they all like try to get in closer to like get in touch of his powers. Like, I am done. It was as if I had become a plague. Sadness and pain followed me everywhere. Oh. My mother prayed for me through weeping maidens, but I turned out to be the one for whom you cannot pray. Wow. I was very young, and Sifa forbade praying for me. <laughs> Honestly, like, that's so rude. That's hurtful. Like, he's still one of his children. The angels, realizing this, decided to protect me from everyone. Aww. But the parents couldn't let the angels take their only son away from them. So they kidnapped me and hit me in the maze. <laughs> oh, hold up. He said the angels wanted to, like, protect him, but the parents couldn't accept it. So, like, the angels would have, like, I don't know, taken Bond, or let's just say, taken Malbonti away from his parents so that they could protect him. But uh, the parents would have had to, like, say goodbye to Malbanti, and they didn't want that. Mom held me in her arms, pressing me more tightly with each step. Father ran behind constantly, looking over his shoulder. Where are we going? I feel so bad. Like, what is this? Don't be afraid, Bond. Don't be afraid. Why did your mom call you Bond? Because she only... Uh, I have two theories. Either she didn't want to see the evil in him. Even though she knew there was. Or she just uh, only saw the good quality in him. Like she saw the good in him. And she ignored all the rest. His face looked like stone. Stern, cold-blooded, insensitive. But I noticed a bitter grin flashing across his face. That's my birth name. Oh, not his, not his birth name being Bond. Nah, that's so cute. Mom's only the good people. Like, what did I say? What did I just say? Like, I just know everything. <laughs> Mom's only the good on me. But because of my dark side, everyone added Maul to my name. Wow. Even my father started calling me that. Can I just say, I think he's calling himself Malbonti and doesn't want to be called Bond. Because he, out of spite. Like he's like, yeah, everyone is calling me Malbonti. Not only Bond, even my own father is starting to call me Malbonti. So I don't want the Bond... I don't want to be called Bond anymore because no one actually believes that I have goodness inside of me anymore. Only you. And so he said out of spite he doesn't want to be called Bond. Because his mother kept on calling him Bond. But he's like, my name is Malbonti. So he actually, I think he said it out of spite. Like, yeah, you're not calling me Bond because no one actually believes that I have some ounce of goodness inside of me so why should anyone call me bond honestly i feel bad from a bondy i feel bad honestly from now on i'm gonna call him bond i'm gonna call him bond but you didn't like it when your mom called you bond did you no 
Why not? <laughs> Why? Because I'm not Bond. Why not? You are Bond. You're Maul and you're Bond. You're both. He continued the story, ignoring for the questions. Bond, why are you like this? I'm gonna call him Bond. I don't care. <laughs> Annabelle, calm down. No one is coming after us. Father stopped mom and took her by the shoulder. She burst into tears. He's good. Why is he being persecuted? Why did Sifa give permission for this? I feel bad for the mom. Don't cry. I feel so... Honestly, honestly. Like the poor parents and Malbonte. Like, poor all three of them. Poor them. Oh no, no, I'm crying. <laughs> Not the mom crying. Like, please stop. Bond is good. He just got scared. I feel so bad. Let him go. Father put me on the st ground, squatted in front of me and spoke with me. As with an adult. My Bonte, you have to stay here for a while, okay? Why? Aww. We'll try to get an amulet that will hide your energy. While you're here, don't, they won't find you. Do you promise to stay here? I promise. I had there until one day, a girl came to me. Just like that, she accidentally dropped by, not expecting to find the most wanted monster of them all. But he's not a mo Honestly, the fact that he keeps on calling himself a monster, like, breaks my heart. I don't think he wants to be called a monster. He grins her- Like I said, I just know- he grinned sarcastically. I remember. Did you see everything that happened? What are you talking about? Who is this Bond? I don't know. Mom's eyes widened when she recognized the girl. She clung to the child, grabbed her hand a little roughly and said, You are Arrogant's sister. And you're the mother of my Bonte. Yeah, she's my mother. So what? She gasped. Be quiet, Bond. What have you done? Mom fell to her knees, shook the girl, looking into her eyes, almost begging her. Please, can you keep it a secret that you saw Bond here? A man's voice made Mom turn around, relieved and scared at the same time. She won't keep a secret. Ooh! You mean, oh my god, the mom! Mom screamed, oh my god! Mom screamed, covered her face with her hands. She cried heart-rendingly, and the wings behind her trembled and clenched. For the first time, I noticed tears in my father's eyes. I suppose that he loves his wife, like Bond's mother. Hearing her cry like that, of course, is gonna hurt him. And besides, I don't think that he wanted to do it either. So, but he saw it as a necessary evil, I think. What is this? I'm sorry. Huh? Oh, God. She barely managed to scream, and her t cry was like a s the squeak of a kitten. The girl fell dead at her feet. This was the first murder of a child. Not the sad face! Like he's actually... Nah! The blood of this girl soaked into the ground and poisoned the maze. The curse of the Garden of Adam and Eve. From now on, everyone who entered here became hostage to their fears and desires. Yes, fear because Malbanti had to stay there and the, uh, the parents wanted him to stay there because they feared that someone would hurt him and hunt him and desires because they desired for him to be free, like to, just to be accepted. God... Your parents were so cruel. They weren't the right thing. I don't think that killing someone is the right thing. Made a desperate decision. Um, Were so cruel. I mean, it was cruel to kill a child. But they did it because they wanted to protect and save their son. 
I think every parent would react like that. Not to kill someone, like, no. But they would do everything in their power, even do something that morally is something they would never do to protect their child. So, they made a desperate decision. Yes. Oh! So he's in agreement here. He thought about it. Yes, they were driven by the spur. Okay. The curse was so strong that everyone felt its inception. So if I instantly found out what had happened and where we were, do you know what Seva's capital punishment is? No. Mom's and Dad's faces suddenly became weird, focused, but at the same time very distant. And suddenly my mom screamed. They fell to their knees. What's wrong with you? I saw the wings getting pulled out of their backs like tree roots during a storm. Blood poured down their backs. Oh! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! It's as simple as that. No trial or explanation. Sif so decided that on his own. He doesn't ask anyone for permission. Wow. The ground under their feet cracked wide open, like a path leading a sinner into hell. They fell through. I threw myself on the floor, but the gap began to close. No. I stretched out my hand to reach them, but I couldn't. Oh my god. Oh my god. Honestly, the pain and compassion I feel for Melbanti is insane. Honestly, now, I was left alone, scared, lost, embittered. I ran as fast as I could, but they surrounded me in the end. Yeah, because he couldn't stay in the maze anymore, like they all knew that he was in there. That vision when you killed them all. Yes, that was after Sifa tore my, off my parents' wings and sent them to Earth. Yeah, I, I suppose it, it actually makes sense. Like, seeing your parents being, like, punished like that, you run out in despair, lost alone, and terrified, and then everyone suddenly starts to look at you, starts to follow you, like, run after you, and you know that you are being persecuted. Seeing what happened just now with your parents, you're terrified that something like that or something even worse might happen to you. And you ask them to stay away because you, you literally know what just happened with your parents. I was so enraged. My pain killed almost half of the angels and demons nearby. I had a terrible power that was impossible to control. And then Sifa split you in two? Yes. That's horrible, honestly. Like, I can't... I'm not in harmony with Sifa. Like, honestly, what you did, you actually allowed him to be hunted down in the first place by people just because he was born by an angel and a demon. And because uh, probably... Not probably, technically... Sifa wanted to punish him for having been the first one to survive. Like, he's one of the first people that actually survived being born by an angel and a demon. He has been hunted because of that his entire life. And because of that desperate decision from the parents, Sifa found out where they were. And he said, yeah, no, I'm going to rip out your wings. I'm going to turn you into humans and I'm going to uh, put you on Earth. Leaving Malbanti all alone and still letting people persecute him to let, them, uh, to let him be experimented on like he knows. He knows their intentions and he knows that he was being hunted. And because he killed them, because he literally was terrified that something horrible or something even worse might happen to him, he said, yeah, I'm going to split you in two, you're too dangerous. Like, you're the reason that all this happened. Oh my god, I'm so mad. Malbanti straightened up, strolled to the fireplace and stood beside it. The light of the flames underlined his profile. His face looked cruel and un uncompromising. 
Since birth, Malbanti has been persecuted for who he is. Yes, he was hated and feared. Fearing losing him, the parents took the girl's life. And Sifa took them away from Malbanti. Yeah, literally, this was a devil's circle, technically. The parents killed a daughter. No, a sister. Let's just say a sister, because he, uh, the mother said, You're arrogant, sister? Was that his name? They killed her. And Sifa said, I'm gonna, uh, like, um, the parents took a sister away from her brother. And Sifa took the parents away from Albanti. Like, they separated son and parents. He was alone. Always alone. Without turning to me, Malbanti spoke up. It's late. You can stay here if you like. Oh, the rooms aren't so welcoming. I'd like to stay here. He swiftly turned to me as if it wasn't the answer he expected. Then he nodded. Good. I'm glad you trust me. Will you sleep here too? Did you expect him to, like, go outside? Of course. These are my chambers. So he was the one who took us out from that dungeon he locked us up in. Okay. I got up a little. Awkwardly tucked the blanket under me, covering myself as if in a cocoon. <laughs> We're like, little innocent, I'm nothing, I'm just here. Yeah, that. <laughs> that one, one tea. <laughs> So literally, as I was just imagining it, yeah, yeah. Noticing this, Malbanti laughed softly. Don't worry about that. He's probably just gonna jump onto the blanket, like not even covering himself. He sat back in the chair. Sir! No! You lay down on the bed, it's yours! He sat back in the chair. He didn't look at me anymore. He fixed his gaze on the fireplace. Dancing, wriggling tongues of fire reflected in his pupils. The flames made him look even more sinister and ominous. Every part of his body was tense, his cheekbones, his well-defined chin, his big strong arms. He's still alone. I feel so bad. Like, honestly, can I give this man a hug? He probably would, like, push me off, but I would still hug him. Malbanti told me this so I'd understand him better, so I'd hate him less. He turned towards me as if he felt my gaze. What? I wanted to cover myself with the blanket and hide from his eyes. Nah, at this point, I'd better go to sleep. Only if you go to bed as well, sir. It's not healthy to sleep in a chair. Alright. I obediently closed my eyes. I woke up in the middle of the night, feeling feverish. Visions flickered so quickly that I couldn't keep up with them. I saw distorted figures coming at me, and they frightened me. I wanted to scream, but I couldn't. Instead, I slightly twisted and turned in my bed, until I felt someone's hand holding me tightly and heard a voice whispering in my ear. Let's go! He laid down next to us. Nah, that's so cute. Don't be scared. You'll get used to my presence. It enhances your strength and visions. You have to power through. Aww. Honestly, those may not be like sweet words, like the words we heard from Bond. But considering all the bad things that he ever did or told us up until this point, there may not be insanely evil, okay? But like they weren't very nice things. This is one of the nicest things he said to us. This time, he brought the basin of water himself, dipped a rack into it, and then placed it on my forehead. Mavanti. <laughs> no, I love him. His hands felt so hot compared to the cold rack. Before plunging into heavy sleep again, I whispered, Thank you. Oh. When the fever subsided, I woke up again. Malbanti was sleeping in the armchair. Nah, he did not actually go back into the chair. Like, this must be so uncomfortable. Especially because of the wings. He looks nothing like the monster they've described. That. 
I remembered his eyes, furious, ruthless. But he can be that a force too. Yes. <laughs> Honestly, in this age, you have to be capable to do both. Like be nice, but not let yourself be taken advantage of. Like you can be both. Next to this monster, I was calm. And it scared me more than anything else. Nah, I'm living. In the morning, Malbanti called me to his place. He looked as menacingly and cold as yesterday, as if he didn't, as if we didn't have that heart-to-heart -heart chat the day before, and he never told me his story. I just thought it over. I straightened up. Think what over? You know what? My proposal. I was silent, afraid to imagine how he'd react if I reject him. Will he turn into the monster I paint him to be, or will he accept my decision calmly? Um, I'm waiting. What's your answer? I fancy I knocked impatiently on the door. Malbanti answered, obviously annoyed. <laughs> what now? Oh! <laughs> Look, it's on our side. What's going on? I think you need to see this. Malbanti got up, took me by the elbow, and dragged me along. What's this? I was having deja vu of some sort. Lucifer, Dino, Mimi, we're on their knees. What are you... I took a step towards them, but Malbanti put his hand forward, cutting me off. Imprison them. Oh, 